So we're going back to Derech Hashem. We, uh, we took a few weeks off to talk about Roshani, Yom Kippur, and Sukkot. And hopefully if we have time at the end, we can actually tie in what we're learning in, uh, in Derech Hashem into, uh, into Sukkot. And uh, I want to thank, uh, as always, Leah Goldman for organizing the class. And she asked that we all dive in. This class should be in the merit of Miriam Bas Yehuda Leib, that uh, she shouldn't be cremated. Wow. And uh, if everyone could please dive in. Miriam Bas Yehuda Leib. Okay, so we are continuing. We are continuing from Chelik Aleph, Perik Hei Osches, which is 158. And we're talking about the source of evil. Uh, it's been a few weeks since we, uh, we talked about this topic, but the last thing we were discussing is that the source of everything in the physical world it's has its origination in the spiritual world something called the kohos and these kohos are the source of everything of everything in the spiritual world everything in the physical world and we are all connected to them and it's mishtal shell it comes down to our existence but the original source is these kohos this, on this very uh, lofty level. So everything in the physical and spiritual has its source in these kohos. But what we're going to learn tonight is that there's a fundamental difference between the creation of good and the creation of evil. How Hashem created good versus how He quote unquote created um, evil. Let's just see what put my notes. Okay, so let's start. V'tzarech sheteida, one should know, ki hinei, afal pi shebe'em asibas kol anyani atov b'chol makam shehem, perish ben b'kochos b'en b'tod esayem, hinei hi, he ares panav yizbarach k'mo shezacharnu, v'sibas rab b'chol makam shehu, helem haraso. The source of everything good, whether it's in this world, whether it's in the kochos, or the, what comes out of the kochos, which is our world, the source of every of all good is Hashem's illumination. And the source of all evil, whether it's in the Kochos or whether it's in our world, which is, again, the um, tolda, the reaction, it's probably not the best word, the what comes out of the Kochos, the source of all evil is the lack of illumination from Hashem. So the source of good is Hashem's illumination, and the source of evil is the lack of Hashem's illumination. Amnam. When we talk about Hashem being the creator of good, He is what we would call the direct creator of good. He is the direct source. But when we say that Hashem is the creator of evil, we wouldn't say that He's the direct creator and He's the direct source. Because it says, Hashem does not associate His name with evil. So rather, what is the source of evil? The source of evil is this lacking, or this quote-unquote hiding of Hashem. So what we've just learned so far is that while Hashem is obviously the source of everything, and He is the creator of everything, the way that we say He creates good is not the same way that He creates evil. And we're going to, the Ramchal is going to expound on this idea. One, when it comes to good, he's the direct cause. And when it comes to evil, he is the, it's the absence of good. Which also, he, um, the Ramchal speaks out more in Das Tfunos, a little more clearly. It's not like Hashem created good and Hashem created evil, and they're constantly fighting with each other. That's not how it works. The source of all good is Hashem's illumination, and the source of evil is just the lack of illumination. So he actually explains there, and there's different levels. He says if a, Hashem's illumination is on a person, if he is getting all of the ha'ara from Hashem, then he lives a very happy, peaceful life. Everything goes well. If Hashem were to stop his illumination, he would die. A person would die. If Hashem would withhold some of his illumination, he would have a difficult life where he might be poor, might get sick all the time. So there's different levels. And it's all sourced to the degree which we can receive the hashba from Hashem, Hashem's illumination. So good is when Hashem illuminates, and evil is when there is a lack of that illumination. 
and it's not the pshat, it's not the, it's not the explanation that Hashem created good and created evil, and they're fighting with each other, but rather Hashem created good through His illumination, and evil is just a lack of that illumination. And now we're, we're learning that while Hashem is the direct cause of good, He is not the direct cause of evil, even though He created everything. So let's see, what does that mean? Hashem is all-powerful, and there is nothing that He can't do. He created, Hashem created a certain root, a certain makor, a certain source, that through that source, evil should come to exist. To the degree that Hashem wanted man to have in the world. Meaning because we know that we learned earlier in Derech Hashem that there has to be good and evil in the world so that man has free will. If everything was good, then there would be no free will and we couldn't get reward because the whole purpose of creation is that Hashem wants to be mated, wants to do good to creation. And the, that we can, the best good is when we earn it ourselves because when we earn it ourselves, we become similar to Hashem and to some level. And we can only earn it ourselves if there is good and there is evil. And we have a choice. If everything was good, we wouldn't have a choice. We couldn't earn anything. However, the way he created evil, so, so Hashem needed us, wanted a certain level of evil to exist in the world, for that choice to exist. So the way he created evil is different than the way he created good. The way Hashem created good is he is his mashpia, his illumination comes forth. The way that he, Hashem, quote-unquote, created evil is he created a certain root that was lacking some of his illumination, and through that root, it, you, the word he used, concatenated down, the result was that by the time that lack of a root of lack of illumination reached our world, or reached lower worlds, that lacking of illumination produced evil. So that would be the source, I believe, of mazikin and other negative uh, spiritual forces. So why Hashem directly creates good, evil only exists why Hashem creating this shoresh, which is lacking some of his illumination, and then the byproduct of that is evil, which comes into existence. And that's why the verse says, the verse that the Ramchal quotes here is, he says, Yotzer or ubore choshech, ose shalom uvore ra. When it comes to light, it says Yotzer, it says Yitzira. But when it comes to darkness, sorry, evil, it says Bore. So uh, he quotes in the bottom here from, I think it's based on the Vilna Gon, Rav Chaim Freelander, that there's, we know that in Hebrew there are, um, the word, there's different words for creation. You have a word Bria and you have the word Yitzira which they both mean creation, but we know in Hebrew there's really no such things as, uh, I think they're homonyms, right? Uh, two words that, synonyms, synonyms, sorry, synonyms, forgot all that stuff from elementary school. They're not uh, synonyms, they're not exactly alike. Every Hebrew word, even though they both mean creation, they mean something different. So he explains that the word Bria refers to the initial creation, while the word Yitzira refers to forming various components. So when it comes to good, the Pasuk uses the word Yitzira. When it comes to light, Hashem created and formed the good directly. But when it comes to evil, it uses the Lashon of Bria because Hashem only created the original source that evil would come out as a byproduct of. Okay, any, uh, any questions so far? Okay. I just want to double check something here. Right, okay. We touched on all that. So let's continue. The Inyan Ashor Shazer, who Klau Koho shown him, Yishtal Shlumehem, Yanayachi Saran, Vaharos, Kulam, Behold, Behin I say him. This source, these Kohos that Hashem, that exist with some of Hashem's illumination lacking, they are Mishtal Shell down, and all types of evil. And shortcomings, chisaron, he uses both terms here, chisaron, lacking, and downright, and ra, and evil. 
and all of their aspects come from these sor- this source. Bein mashin agel nefesh, bein mashin agel aguf. Whether it's relevant to a spiritual thing or our souls, or whether it's relevant to our bodies. Bechol prateim lemachlok yisayim, according to all the aspects. And he says we're going to speak more about this in the second section. All of these forces act, either uh, actively or passively, whether it's part of the forces or all of the forces, based on Hashem hiding himself, hiding his face. Hester Panov. According to the level which Hashem hides his illumination, according to the degree which Hash- of Hashem's illumination which is lacking, that will be the degree that evil can exist and that evil will have a power. When these forces of evil increase, the forces of good will weaken. And the sources of these kochos will be uh, messed up. The sources of everything which in creation, which is these kochos, will be miskalkel. They will weaken, and everything which comes out of them will weaken. And when these forces weaken, then the forces of good will strengthen and uh, and be fortified in the in a, a good situation. And the sources of good will be strengthened and all of the branches which come out of them. So we see that it's a two sides of the same coin. The more of Hashem's illumination, the more good is in the world, the less evil can exist. The more evil which is exist, the more um, subjugation of Hashem's uh, illumination there is, and which produces everything bad in the world. Like we said, different degrees of illumination. If you look at a person, if a person, a lot of illumination is going, then he's living a happy, nice, easy life. If it stops, he's dead. If there's lacking illumination, he'll have more problems in his life. He'll have to exhibit poverty and sickness and all of those horrible things. And he says the whole source of all of this and the source of this good and the evil and the, and the battle between the mind and the body, they're all sourced in these kochos, these supernal forces, these very lofty supernal forces. And they or Mishtal shall down to our world. Or in really all of creation. And all of their subjugation and the uh, and um, the the hachna or the bittel of these forces and all of the different aspects and branches to it, they all are sourced in these um, in these kochos. So the, through the strengthening of the kochos of good, there's more good in the world because everything is sourced in these kochos. So just to, one second, let me just look here for a second. Right. So the the more of Hashem's illumination that exists in the world, the less um, the less um, the less evil there will be. Um, Sorry, I just lost my train of thought for a second. Someone just has a question. I'll get back to the question uh, in just a second. But again, just uh, what we said from the beginning is that the source of Hashem is the direct source of all good, whereas He is not the direct source of all evil. Rather, He there is a koach which is lacking some of Hashem's illumination, and the result of when it comes into the lower worlds is that evil is created. And part of our mission is to bring that illumination into the world and when more of Hashem's illumination, how do we do that? Obviously by Torah and mitzvos, and by following what Hashem says. And the more illumination that exists in the world, evil will be subjugated because the more that Hashem is, is light is in the world and the less Hester upon him, the more goodness will be in the world. And that's why it ties into Sukkot because every day we know there are 70 cows that are slaughtered are brought as a sacrifice 
in the temple for the Shivim Umos. And we start with 13 cows, and I believe we go to 6 cows on the last day, or 7, I forgot. Whatever adds up to 70. And it represents that these 70 cows were going 13 down to 7 to show the bittle of Ra, the, the, um, the destruction of evil, that every day of Sukkot, the, the forces of evil are getting weaker and weaker. And how does that happen? Like we said, by increasing the illumination of Hashem, by getting Hashem's Ha'ara into the world. And that's what happens when Mashiach comes, that all the Shivim Umos, the 70 nations, will say, oh, the Jews were worshipping Hashem the entire time. Now we want to worship Hashem, and they're going to come to us to find out how, what's the proper way to, to serve God. And the whole world will know the truth of Hashem and His illumination. And when Mashiach comes, the illumination will be complete and it will be good. And that's why if you look in the Haftarahs of Sukkot, you'll see that it talks about Yemos HaMashiach, um, what the world is going to be like, and it's very interesting in the Achras Hayamim Sukkot, and we all talk about uh, the last day of Sukkot, we say the uh, Yehi Rotson about eating in the uh, Sukkah of the Leviathan, Leviathan, which is also connected to the end of days. It says that Tzadikim will participate in the Suda of the uh, Leviathan. So we see all these ideas of the Achras Sayyam of the end of days relating to Sukkot, and that really comes about through the Bittal of Ra, the destruction of evil, which is represented by the decreasing number of cows, the Parim, that are brought every day of Sukkot. So I just see there's a question here. Um, so someone asks, sometimes, um, sometimes that things look bad, but uh, they're actually for the good. So I was, I was actually thinking that when I was learning this, meaning he's quoting the Ramchal here in Das Tfunos, that when the Shefa is, um, when Hashem's Shefa is lacking, then, you know, a person will be sick. But maybe sometimes, you know, Hashem wants a person to be sick for a different reason, or he's, uh, it's Yisurim Shalava, or maybe he needs to grow from it. So that's a very good question. I was wondering this myself. I, I wasn't, uh, wasn't exactly sure how that all fits in. But definitely, in general, what he's saying, that evil isn't a separate you know, it's not, it's not like we have a battle between two equal creations that Hashem made of good and evil, but rather evil doesn't exist when Hashem's illumination can come into the world. It's only when there's a Hester, when there's a lack of Hashem's illumination, that evil can exist. So I didn't answer your question, but I'll try to look into that because uh, I think it's a very good question. Any, any other questions or comments? All right, great. Thank you to everyone for coming. I think this was more... Uh, Productive than the watching the vice presidential debate, and uh, definitely, thank you, definitely. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. It's definitely more conducive to bringing light into the world than watching uh, Mike Pence and Kamala Harris. So, have a good night and Chag Sameach. Chag Sameach. Good morning.